So I'd like to give you this morning is a particular framework and perspective on how we understand not only the radio conditions but practically all other mystical messages. You know, the video conditions, I would like to put it as one piece of a jigsaw puzzle of the private television. Just one piece of a jigsaw puzzle certainly it does not mean much. You can interpret it as many ways as you can, but it does not tell you the actual picture. It is only when we look at the messages of any private revelations in the context of the entire complete revelation of God. So this is the first thing that we have to do in understanding any new form of prophecy. We have Fatima, we have uh, Divine Mercy, we have now the new kind of spirituality of Luisa Pegareta. All these things are private revelations, but they should be seen as pieces of puzzles that will not stand on its own. It will stand only looking at the bigger picture. And because of this, there are two things that we need to understand regarding divine revelation, public revelation and private revelation. You know, in a puzzle, I would take the public revelation as some kind of outline. You use a pattern, okay? okay? And out of this pattern, you build many stitches until you form a beautiful image. That for me is public revelation. In our activism, it tells us everything that the Lord has revealed to us in His entirety. But you remember the Lord once telling His disciples, well, there are many things I still have to tell you, but you cannot tell me now. It is when the Holy Spirit comes, He will tell you the entire truth. So this is the first framework that we have to see when we learn, when we try to understand the message of Amsterdam. The way we also understand the message of Fatima. Now, the message of the radio conditions is a private revelation. So these are pieces of pastas in different forms. And I just want to give you one example. It doesn't stand on its own. You will only see that at the end of our picture. This is how I would like to, to, to start in trying to understand these messages of our Lady of all nations. Whether this is the face that you use, no? who was once married, or whether we understand the appeal of our lady about the fifth dogma as polydemplates and polygenics, or even in the prayers that we say, Lord, send us now your stay. We have to understand this in the complete picture. This is what the Lord said. I still want to tell you, but you cannot yet bear it now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. And this is what Catechism tells us, we read the readings together. New, no new public revelation is to be expected before the glorious coming of the Lord. Yet, even if revelation is already complete, it had not been completely explicit. It remains for the faithful to gradually grasp its full significance over the course of centuries. I would like to underline this. Everything is revealed. You remember the Lord once said, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And we talk about revelation that's from the Old Testament up to the New Testament. Everything that the Lord has said is already complete. But the church tells us that even everything is revealed, not everything is explained. 
That's how we understand what the words of the Lord really said. There's still many things to tell, and yet you cannot tell it now. It will be the Holy Spirit who will tell you everything. Another night that is very important in the stress of our catechism is that it remains for the people to gradually grasp its full significance over the course of centuries. What is our catechism telling us here? That in the revelation that was already given, the explanation or the disclosure is progressive. It will be a gradual. Parable in God I the cross case, no? even we have the outline, no? we have the pattern, but it takes time for us to finish the okay. Can you what? Can you imagine that the message of our lady at Amsterdam is just a piece of such a huge and immense message of God in his plan, in creation, in redemption? and in the restoration of all things. You can imagine how he makes it. That's why, you know, when you just read that phrase, who was once Mary on his own, it will really be very confusing. But if you look at it in the total picture, which we will see later on, then you will understand, Tama, Tama ito, praise ito, but we have to understand it rightly. Okay, what is this progressive revelation? There are two ways that the Holy Spirit continues and gradually explains to us what God has revealed in the scriptures in our Lord Jesus. The first is the teaching of the church, the magisterium. You know, when you talk about the teaching office of the church, it is very definitive. So the emphasis here is teaching the truth. The church defines the truth. No? Let me say, it is infallible. For example, no? I don't know, uh, if you recall, just recently we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, right? Okay. Liturgically, you see how the church arranges how truths of our faith has been gradually given to us this time, by the church through the power of the Holy Spirit. For example, after Pentecost, what solemnity do we celebrate after it? Trinity. Nowhere in the Bible can you find the word Trinity, right? But the Lord has been talking about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Himself, and the Holy Spirit, and yet, it was taken on through the power of the Holy Spirit. The church was able to define the basic truths of the God that was revealed to us in Corinthian words. After Trinity, what is the next solemnity? Corpus Christ. Again, the Lord talked about the Last Supper, talked about the multiplication of bread, but later on the church, again, through the Holy Spirit, explain to us what all these things that we want to do. That in the form of bread and wine, we believe in this real presence. What's the next? Sacred heart. And now we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All these things the Church would like us to see as part of pieces of that great master of God revealing to us everything that has been said but this time is telling to us in a more closer way. You know, I remember one theologian explains private revelations as like magnified events. There is a particular part of revelation which is being magnified by the Holy Spirit to us, being explained to us deeper using these private revelations. We will see later on what lens our lady would like us to see with his with her messages in Amsterdam. We will see what particular point in the revelation he is trying to she's trying to make us understand. Okay. I'm saying now about the teaching of the church. There is another way. 
the Holy Spirit continues to explain Revelation, and this time, these are given to individuals. They are inspired also by God, but these individuals must pass through the test of the church because it is the church who will finally define as truth all these revelations. You know, Rome tells us so many messages, but they are just so inadequate to process all these mystical experiences. You know, if there is some, something that I think is very much in demand in the line of theological studies. You have a doctor of Pope, who is a specialist. You know, internist, cardiologist, you know, a surgeon. If there is one specialty in theological studies that for me is very much in demand, and the church finds herself in adequate it is in the field of mystical theology. We had a lot of Christology, we had a lot of Marnology, but we miss Patrology and mystical theology. I remember when we were in San Carlos, uh, we had only one subject, one semester in Patrology. And I remember it was, when I see now the demand of, of these messages we need, two fields of theology, learning about the church fathers and learning about mystical Because all of these writings now that we are receiving are mysticisms. That's why you have to understand that we just down these things. It's not because we don't like them, it, is, it shows only our inadequacy to understand and to appreciate these messages simply because we do not have enough training for this. When we were studying, we always take Christology as a point of reference in Mariology, but that is not enough now. We need other fields of theology like mysticism and patrology, the studies of the church fathers. These are the sources and references of understanding these new forms of prophecy which we call private revelations. But the problem, of course, with these private revelations, these pro new prophecies, for them to be accepted as divine truths, they must pass the approval of the church. They must pass the approval of the church. Now, what is the basic difference of these two? The teaching of the church is about teaching. Private revelations focuses more on living. These are given to us by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for us to help how to live these messages of the Lord that continues to be disclosed to us. You see how this two processes plays very important role in leading our faith. Now what is important now is to see the message of Amsterdam as part of this progressive revelation. Iti na po natin mamaya ano ba yung focus na niribigay sa atin ng Diyos through our Blessed Mother in this private uh, prophecy. This is, uh, this, I get this from uh, Pope Benedict when he was still a cardinal and he was doing this commentary about the message of Father. When you remember, he was asked by John Paul II to, to study and make commentary about the message of Father. This is what he said as part of We can read it together. Revelation never ends. God continues to reveal Himself to His Church in every age as there are new times and circumstances in the course of centuries. The revelation that Christ fulfilled always requires a new form, and this form is often the written testimony of many of the day's past. Ida is one of them. 
St. Paul's Lida is one of our new prophets. The three seniors at Fatima, St. Margaret Alaco, all these mystics are used by God. And there are so many mystics in the church right now. Unfortunately, we are so inadequate to process all the messages that they receive. Well, the mystics, of course, that we know in the, in the those who are studying the Fatima messages is Father Gobi. Father Gobi. We have this blue book. No? And uh, although it has, it has already a clear all by the bishops, but we are still also waiting for the authentic creation no? of these messages. Right now, many will consider it as just a reflection of these priests. But until the end of his life, no, Father Bobby said, no, it is not my reflection. These are the words of the lady explaining more. No? Can you imagine explaining more what she said at Fatima and how these messages unfold no? in history in our time, in all the circumstances that we are experiencing. Can you imagine the layers no, of these messages are really so rich that you cannot just look at it as it is. I really would need another mystic aside from the three seers for us to understand more what this Father message is. So also is our religious message in Amsterdam. So we are now seeing in this the Lady of All Nations as a kind of a new form of prophecy that we must accept in the church. So we say, with progressive revelation, God would be to the good. The good thing, the good thing in this private revelation is they, have, they are there for a very specific period of time. So even, even the time and circumstances has something to do, has something to do with God telling us or explaining to us all these messages. So we have to tell you that even, even in the times that we are reading, God continues to speak. The same as when Our Lady of Nations appeared and gave the message right after the war, God is also revealing something to the world. And this is the purpose of these mystical messages. So, one particular characteristic that we have to understand in primary revelation is that God speaks to us in a very particular moment in a very particular incident in our life. So this is now what the Pope, no? the Pope, would like to define us about private revelation. Read this together. Prophecy does not mean predicting the future, but to explain the will of God for the present and show the right path to take for the future. Prediction of the future is meant essentially to bring us back to the present in order to live it according to His will. In this case, prediction of the future is of secondary. What is essential is our reawakening in the present moment to actualize God's revelation. Most of us, when we hear these things, will always have the feeling of prediction. It's easy. But open it tells us differently. It's not about prediction, but it's about making us see the will of God in our present moment. And to show us, if you want to see the future, if you want to see the future, God is showing us the path to the so if the future is concerned, it is more about how we go through it. It is, the emphasis is how we live, no? how we live according to this will. 
You know, this is, I think, what many of us also miss when we think about all these details of revelations. We miss the holiness. We miss the holiness. And it is our real beginning in the present moment. This time, not just to live the will of God, but to be able to see the real picture of God's plan for us. So just to, to, to sum it up, no? I'd like you to look at the message of our Lady of Nations as part of God's continuing distortion. And about the future, not also about details, but it is entirely. You know, this is what is sad of us. I remember Cardinal Tarly once said in a talk, no? na sa dami natin na natin mga Marian Rose, no? uh, iba-iba ang paningin natin. Uh, but the problem is, with so many things that we have, we are too much to use, uh, yeah, to use a very simple word, we are very much politicized. Why? Because we look at these pieces of puzzle as this. So don't, don't go much into the details. Uh, even, you know, people involved in Fatima, what is very sad here is they, they even went to the point of, you know, with the differences of their ideas, no? They are not just politicized, but they even war among themselves. Sometimes even defying, defying even the church authorities. Simply because they have seen a very particular detail and they can move on with it. So we have to look at this, this, this picture of a piece of puzzle into a bigger one. Now, what is the little of patience? She was given a particular type of circumstance. The target of this about the beginning is 1945 to 1950. Right after the war, and you remember, if you look at the timeline that was in the church, it is also within the timeline where the fourth dogma was declared by the church in Thailand. She asked for a devotion for five first Saturdays. Sabi niya, it is a reputation for the offenses done against her five privileges. I said, why are you five? Ay, apat na rin yung alam natin. But, divine maternity, perpetual virginity, immaculate conception, assumption. May kuna pa. Sabi niyo ng Blessed Mother, hindi yung hindi yung natin. And that for me is the, one of the particular message of God through our Blessed Mother, even to be that that there is something that we are waiting, this is the big dogma about the communities and communities. In general, the messages of our lady here is explaining to us some difficult things and for me, echoes of the message of Fatima. We have to remember that the church says that Fatima is the most prophetic of all Marian messages. It is the mother of all Marian uh, prophecies. And it is from this, especially those following apparitions, that we can draw, that we can draw and understand. We have to read the message of Amsterdam side by side with the message of Our Lady at time. For us to be able to see their connections. We also have to read the piece of puzzle in Amsterdam in the context of the great outline or framework in the scriptures. There are three particular messages that I would like to point out in the verse of our lady. These are not isolated messages, 
But when you put these three pieces of puzzle into one and put it again in another framework, they are all very much connected. The first is the investment that the Lord did at Calvary, and the second, when after the ascension, when our Lady took prominent presence among the apostles, particularly at Pentecost. Let me show you how we must understand this phrase, who was once here. You know, I find that scene at Calvary, at the moment of redemption, Jesus made a very important pronouncement also about his work of redemption. It is when Jesus addressed Mary as woman. Ano gusto niyo sabihin? Oo, Mary ang pangalan ng nanay ko, but I will address her as woman. Hindi na Mary. You know why? Because the word woman is the only word that we find in the scriptures where God recognized Mary in her unique role of church. Mary is a Jewish name. But in the Bible, that is not how God recognized Mary. And that is what Jesus indicated. She is the woman. Mary is in God's eternal plan with this word woman. Very interesting for her. I'll give you a very simple Mariology. At the beginning of the Bible and at the, begin, at the end of the Bible, you will, you will see how Mary is featured. She is the woman. Can you imagine when right after the fall, God already mentioned the word woman when he addressed and cursed to the serpent. I put enmity between you and the woman. And we know who that woman is. What other Mariologists would say, well, the woman father is the church. No? Okay. But most would think that the woman in the book of Genesis is not about the church, it is about a particular woman named and I, I read in one of the writings of uh, a church father, and I quote Sabina, imagine that even before Mary came to this earth, Mary, as a woman, was already conceived in the eternal wisdom of God. Can you imagine that? That's why when Jesus addressed Mary as woman, in the act of redeeming us, she is actually telling us that there is something behind Mary. Mary is her own personal identity, but there is something behind. We post sa kanang interpretation ko lang, who was once there. Hindi na ito Mary. She is woman. And in the mind of God, as we also believe and the church taught us, you know, her immaculate conception is a privilege given only to her and it does not only tell her that she is sinless from the very beginning, but she has the fullness of grace, meaning that Mary is given the grace, the fullness of grace to participate in the very acts of God. That makes Mary more than Mary. That makes Mary more than Mary. We are not just talking here about Christology, we are just talking here about how the Bible would like us to contemplate the word woman from the very and interestingly, when you read the Bible, the first book is about the woman. At the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, the woman is also mentioned 
this time as the sign of God's fulfillment. She is not just the sign of God's triumph over evil, but she is the fulfillment of the plan of God to restore everything in its original order. Kaya na po siya ay Immaculate Conception. Kung ano rin yung ginawa sa kanya, pinagagawin sa ating lahat. At pinagay pa lahat, no? ginawa sa kanya from the very moment of her life. No? She is Immaculate Conception. Tayo po, out of our sinfulness, God will also restore to us in our original state in the image and likeness of God. But here is now this woman singing out. And, and, and the Lord said, you know, there is something behind my mother named Mary. So here, who was once, who was once Mary. It may sound confusing, but I tell you, if you read this phrase in the mystical sense, for me, it is perfectly right. But of course, you have to, to abide by the city. You said that, well, to, di naman po sila sila ng Maria. Sabi na, to avoid confusion and misunderstanding. You know why? It's because of our inadequacy to read and understand mystical messages. But if we have this problem now, we can say that. Then you will commit any error when you say who was once he is putting Mary about us. Putting Mary more than her human identity. She is a woman. You know you remember during the 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 wedding at Ada Piratan? Okay. <laughs> This is also something amazing to me. You know, in spite, in spite of the two rejections of Jesus, Buddha sabi niya, what does that concern to us? We are just tests. Mawa na tayo pang hirap dyan. Makaubusan mo sila, wala tayo pang hirap dyan. Second rejection is when the Lord said, My hour has not yet come. But you know, in spite of these rejections, the miracle took place. Why? You know the reason? At that moment, Jesus addressed his mother as woman. Woman, what does that concern us? My heart has not yet come. It seems to me that the word woman is very something magic in that. <laughs> that once you recognize Mary more than being Mary but woman, this woman can really anticipate grace. Even the grace is not yet there, that woman has that power to anticipate it. And so the miracle to me. Can you imagine the tremendous power that this woman possesses? That's how I would that's how I would look and understand no? the phrase who was once scary. Let me tell you this, there is nothing wrong with this phrase. It only needs us to understand this phrase as a mystical, as a mystical language, and so interpret this as a piece of that puzzle. Of this great and magnificent picture of God's revelation. Call it a place. You need not be a theologian to understand that Mary is called in place and called in Jesus. Even simple people can accept that. And this is how I would like to explain. I am not, <laughs> I am not a theologian, so I cannot speak about it. No? But I will speak. In a simple way, as like you, ordinary Catholics, no, because no simple, no simply our our way. You know, call as a prefix here must be understood not in terms of equality, 
but in terms of partnership. Yun po yung basic door. When we say co-identities and co-mediatrix, we are not putting Mary in equal footing with God. Although she has all these privileges more than us, but she cannot just be equal with God. And yet, what makes her co-identrix and co-mediatrix? Because she is chosen by God from the very beginning to take part in this work of redemption. In the God of Paris says, but in the Nambo, Sinai of Pastor Tito, and it's a lot of the mission talent, the Paris priest. But why are we called also pastors? Not because we are equal with the bishop, but because we are partners of the bishop in this pastoral work. And this is how I would like you to understand in a very simple way the meaning of co mediatrix and co mediatrix Now let's put it this way, no? You know, even before our lady was born, God in her mind had already this plan for her. Kaya siya binigyan na, kaya siya imakulit ko si, here, being sinless man, she has the fullness of grace. That's why you remember, during the Annunciation, that was the greeting of Mary to Mary. Hail, full of grace. Hindi ko binigyan niyo, oh, you are the Immaculate Conception. But she was told, you are full of grace. Meaning, that in the fullness of grace, Mary is given the power to participate in the acts of God. Imagine, hindi mo po sa pinapanganak, yan na ang forma sa kanilang Diyos. Why? Because later on, she will become a partner. And so that's what happened. During the Annunciation, what was her answer? Let it be God. Her people. And she showed also as her role as in her divine maternity and divine motherhood, her role as negating with Jesus, as I mentioned to you in this, in this miracle and king. And of course, at Calvary, I mentioned already, it was really the official acknowledgement of Jesus. Imagine that. Jesus in the act, uh, in the act of redeeming us. You see how how close no? that declaration of Jesus about Mary as woman to this act of redemption. That's why even common people will say, "Ate ya pal, Mary pal is natawa ng body ng Jesus." She was there, close to Jesus. I want you to hold this, no? This is, again, this is, if you're familiar with the blue book, no? Uh, I already said this to Father Gobi in message 201 paragraph. He said, Until I am acknowledged there, where the most holy trinity has willed me to be, I will not be able to exercise my power fully in the maternal work of co-redemption and of universal creation of crisis. Here, Our Lady is telling us that there is something that I'm still waiting that the Church must recognize. This is also what Our Lady said to Ida in Amsterdam. Right after, in the timeline where the Church has proclaimed officially the Assumption of Our Lady as another privilege, there is one more. And this is it. Why is it taking long? This must really be a big thing for the for for the church. Was the church made this? They are sobra and sobra and and para 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 sa buong sa talayo sa dia. But it should not cause us worry. It should affirm our faith in what God has revealed to us from the time, from the very beginning, as we in the scriptures, it affirms to us what the Lord said at Calvary, 
woman with other son. He affirms to us what thing that we have all believed about our best father is really a mother of life. And this is how, this is the reason why our lady of not only in Fatima, but also in Amsterdam. We are waiting for this, for this fifth privilege of our blessed mother. Now, this is my last night. Why the Holy Spirit? You know, when, when you read a prayer, you know, uh, the thing is like that. The prayer of the Lord, the prayer of the Father, the prayer of the Spirit. People will realize that. 
and in a period of near life realization, it will be a, a renewal also in the minds and hearts of people. You know what I already said? By the way, Pope John Paul II said, we must leave Marian revelations with the prophecy of the divine mercy of St. Faustina. They are not separate, they are together. In fact, he said that the lie that St. Faustina is telling us that, is, that with the, the only light that we see in darkness, Marian apparitions like the one we have here in Hila. The light is nothing else but the light of the Holy Spirit. That's why we are talking here about the second Pentecost. You know, unfortunately, even our church, even our liturgy, and the people about the time that they celebrate the Pentecost, a lot of the thing is we remember the Pentecost of what happened before. Anyone? But in fact, what is presented to us is this, that as a church, we must prepare for the second Pentecost. Because the second Pentecost is a moment in the church when all the things from darkness will be go into the experience of light. From chaos, we will experience the moment of peace. That's why our lady at Fatima said, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph and peace will be given to the world. What is the peace? It is not just, you know, having a peaceful life. You know that peace is a lot of many things that we hear from many mystics. There will be many interfacing realities that will happen. And one of that is this universal transformation. Then you might be behind you know, I think traditional prayers of uh, the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, with the hearts of your faithful and even in them the heart of your love. Send for your spirit and they shall be related and you shall renew the face of the earth. What we are talking here, send now your Holy Spirit we are talking here about that after this suffering that we are going through, even after this difficult purification as Iceland, we will come to the point of having the earth and the entire universe renewed by the Holy Spirit. So what we are talking here is not just individual renewal, but it will be a universal transformation. In our previous messages, she tells us also that this universal transformation will be the manifestation of our Lord in His Eucharistic reign. Remember, no? Church Fathers tells us that in the glorious coming of Christ, it is not as if Christ will come again here in His physical body. It will be a spiritual reign. And the reign of Christ will be manifested in a Eucharistic way. In what way? I want to sound this thing. It will be manifested Eucharistically when each one of us becomes living hosts. Among the mystics, this, this Christ in you, this new invention of Christ will be manifested through the second method. A fear of the of the divine mercy. By the way, sabi ko, siguro kaya na ako natalo ang rapong ng extraordinary year of mercy. Kaya po sila may extraordinary, di ba? That's every 25 years or 50 years, habang si Pope hindi nakaantay. Para meron siya nararamdaman. That's how I would, I would, I would really, no? The Pope is feeling something that I cannot wait for that time anymore. Now, that in a, we are living in a time of mercy. Because divine mercy really is part of that great preparation that we are awaiting. Send now your spirit to remind us that the church is moving and leading us to this great event. 
of the universal transformation. After all, after all this darkness that we have experienced, the church will emerge to be a real church. Humble by its own weaknesses, but it will come out to be transformed. When you look at it again, in these mystical messages, it falls on this prayer, send us your Holy Spirit. So here we see a bit of significance of one piece that we hear in our Lady of All Nations. Yes, she was once married because she is the woman. You know, I remember, I don't know if you have seen this, this, uh, there is one issue of the National Geographic which puts Mary at the cover. And the title of the cover is The Most Powerful Woman in the World. Mary. So I go, wow, for these people, the National Geographic, Oh, for sure, they are not Catholics. Some of them may even be atheists. For them to come up with this issue on Mary as in the cover page, and then we marry the most powerful woman in the world, well, wow, that's very revealing. And you know, in a spread, I think it's the center page, so they have a spread, they're able to capture a map of the world, no? and there are dots, different dots, to indicate Marian apparitions. Very good in that. They're able to distinguish abroad apparitions, uh, alleged apparitions, you know, apparitions under study by Rome, but there are so many dots, and you will see how our deity must have covered the entire globe with her apparitions. What does that mean? that she is indeed the lady of our nations. You just have to understand that in our simple way of seeing things, the message of our lady of our nations. It's all here, we just have to read them, not as it is, but we must read them side by side with other revelations of God, and other revelations of new, in new forms of these mystics that are coming out in the church, whether they are approved or still waiting to be approved. Sabi po ni, sabi po ni, I remember one of the folks said, there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong in opening ourselves in all these messages. There's nothing wrong. But we have to read them like making a pasta. If you can take them as is, we have to read them as part of the entire picture of God's revelation. Let us pray that through our devotion to our revelations, we'll be able to see the way we can live more our faith, not to be discouraged, but to have more courage to live our faith in this beautiful time that the Lord has given us. Thank you very much.